My name is Derek and today I'm going to be fixing this. It's obviously <laughs> severely broken. And the big question is, is it fixable? Now the first thing that I'm looking for is, is, is the motherboard in a spot that isn't bent like this? Because given a bend like this, the motherboard would definitely have issues. And lucky for us, the motherboard happens to be from here to here. And it's relatively straight here and relatively straight here. So the motherboard is in a good spot. Now we have a couple issues. The display is obviously busted and the cables cut. The proximity sensor cable is cut. This side of the frame is gone, which means the 5G antenna got torn. Down at the bottom, I can see some damage already on the charge port. So we'll see what that needs. Battery's a little bit bent. Yeah, one thing at a time. Wow, it's busted. The purple almost looks like blue where it's cracked, which is kind of crazy. Now here we can see the 5G antenna <laughs> tore off and the proximity sensor flex tore and the display flex tour. True tone is stored right here on this screen, but we do have the display IC that looks intact, so we'll be able to transfer it. Wow, look at that bend. Oh yeah, and also looks like the power button flex is also cut. All right, off comes the bracket. Let's take a look at the camera. We'll pop off the camera bracket and we'll pop out the camera unit, which actually looks like it's in really good shape. All right, you're gonna disconnect everything that's connected still to the motherboard. There's the rest of the proximity sensor. Let's remove the loudspeaker so we can pop out the motherboard with ease. It appears to be intact. Front facing camera assembly and then the one little hidden standoff screw here at the top. Out comes the motherboard. And looking down at it, it looks pretty straight. All right, let's connect up a power supply. Let's connect up a new display and we'll prompt it to boot. Apple logo, got a proper boot sequence on the power supply. So this should turn on and there we have it. As you can see, it's working. Let's see if we can fix the rest of it. All right, we've got a little tiny standoff screw here. And this bracket will come off and then we'll carefully lift out this guy. Let's take out the Taptic engine and the charge port. All right, so there's all the visible screws. Now comes the loudspeaker. Looks like we got a standoff screw for the Taptic engine and it comes off. All right, looking at a new charge port, we can see what we have is, this corner is where I'm concerned. It looks like this little metal bracket popped off. And it probably is what grounds the this part of the flex to the frame to make it an antenna. And although there are several other contact points, I'm gonna go ahead and, and replace this. So I really don't have to worry much more about here. I do have to get this bracket and a couple screws, but We'll save that until uh, we need to install it. So from here, let's see how this battery comes out and we'll see if it needs to be replaced or not or if it feels solid when we give it that slight bend here. There's all of the adhesive off that side. All right, so we're just gonna gently push down on this, see if we can't flatten back out the cell. All right, so we've got the display and the battery connected, and I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it in. We've got the charge port connected as well. And there we go, we've got it charging. All right, we're charging on. All right, I've had it plugged in for a while, and we're up to 38%. Everything seems like it's still working as, as far as it's concerned in this orientation. Now we still have to replace the 5G antenna because it was tore off as well as the proximity sensor. So let me show you those two repairs. All right, so what we'll do now is disconnect this. And because we have to work on the 5G antenna here, I'm going to remove the sticker here on the back and we've got to remove this guy, desoldering them. But before we start to apply any heat, I'm gonna save these guys by adding some isopropyl alcohol to them. This will loosen up the adhesive, allowing them to basically pull right off. That way, when I'm done with all the heating stuff, I can go and put them back. And this little plastic piece, it kind of goes where a SIM card tray could potentially have gone. All right, to ensure that nothing happens to the motherboard when we're heating it up, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it a couple times with some Captain tape. This will keep things from shifting and splitting when I'm putting heat to the board. I wanna keep that sandwiched together. And we'll do the same thing. All right. 
And let's go under the microscope and take this guy off. All right. One of the convenient things about this one is we have the guides here. These little right angle gold joints. This will help us when we go back to put it on. And the quickest way I found to remove them is like this. We'll just take some solder and our iron. All right. And we will we'll push in the solder to the iron now that it's warm enough. Now we'll add some flux. And we'll pull it away. We'll add some flux, take some wick, and we'll clean up the area really, really good. Now we have our new antenna, and you can see I've already got it pre-balled. We'll add some flux, just like that. Peel off the sticker, line up. Now we'll solder it on down with the hot air. And now that it's not moving, we know that it's soldered down. All right, so we've got the new 5G antenna on there. Let's go ahead and unwrap this. Now we'll put back everything. All right, now let's go ahead and take what we need off of here and put it on here. We need to carefully remove this sticker here. Try to get it with all of the adhesive and we'll set it aside. All right, we've got it clamped up. Add a little bit of flux. We'll grab the flux cable and we we'll carefully melt the joints one at a time, letting the solder basically sink on through, letting the flux cable let go of these joints as it does. Almost there. There we go. Now we'll take our brand new flux cable. We'll line it up just like so and just gently touch each one of the holes letting the solder kind of come up and through i'll take a q-tip with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol take the sticker and we will put it on back and just like that we've installed that component on the new flex that does not have a tear in it and it already has the sensor installed so that's all we need to transfer over. All right, let's go and remove the display IC and transfer it over so that we can eliminate the notification from popping up. All right, so I have got my rework station set to 320 degrees Celsius. And this is obviously a, a completely damaged display. There's no needing to protect anything. So I'm not going to worry about isolating the flex or doing anything weird like that. We're just going to be waiting for the uh, underfill to loosen up. If you're finding it not wanting to melt really fast, the solder isn't starting to melt, you can adjust your rework station. All right, so we've got it off. Now we have to deal with a little bit of underfill. We'll take some flux, take our iron. All right, we'll add some 138 solder paste. I'm gonna go around and try to mix it with the rest of the solder. And at the same time, kind of breaking up the underfill. And I'm just gonna go over it with some wick real quick. Now we'll clean it up and we'll get out the tag on flex for this display that we're going to be using. And as you can see, it is pre-balled. It's got all those nice little bits of solder on there. We'll add some flux and we'll carefully just spread it around, making sure we have a nice and even, really thin coating. We'll line up the dot with the dot in the corner here. Take a bit of captain tape, that way the flex won't move on us and we'll solder it on and we'll let it cool down looks like it could go down a little bit more on that side got my air set about 320 right or my i've got my temperature at 230 right now on your station you might need to be a little higher there we go that's better there you can clearly see that it, the gap is closed up and it's even all the way around it's nice sandwich you can kind of still make out the solder joints but they're all sandwiched pancaked out so I'm content with that. The next step is to solder it right here where it says transferable IC. And you can see the little grid here and the six solder joints. So what I'll do is we'll peel up the flex 
just like that so it's not touching the display so it's away from the display on the back we're going to peel off the protector for the adhesive just like that we'll line it up all right i've compressed it into place but we're going to pop it back up for a second again so we can solder these joints so we'll take a little bit of flux pinch on the cable here all right we'll solder that you can see the solder pop through it and we'll do the same on the other ones solder through and now that we've thoroughly made sure each one of those joints has plenty of solder going through it we can take our q-tip a little bit of isopropyl alcohol clean that up i'm just gonna snip off a little bit of this black sticker here and we'll cover up the solder joints with it and here we've got our new housing that we're going to be installing everything into and make it look brand new and one of the nice things about this is we get our frame back and our button comes with this one doesn't come with the charge port <clears throat> that's okay and it comes with all of the antennas up here at the top along with the flash which is nice you don't have to take that out and the microphone let's go ahead and start with the charge port and work our way to putting this back together. Get that bracket off. And the last screw for the charge port. All right, charge port, loudspeaker, taptic engine all installed. We'll bend this guy over like that. All right, now on this side, we're going to take out the bracket that covers the 5G module. Let's fold up all of the flex cables. It's fighting me here on this cable. There we go, it's better. We'll connect up. 5G antenna. All right, we'll connect up all the connectors, install the front facing camera assembly and the loudspeaker, or should I say ear speaker? All right, let's install our camera assembly. Let's install the proximity sensor. Here's the old one, here's the new one. All right, our display with our original IC soldered on to that tag on flex. Now this battery is a little crinkled, but it charged up nicely, it held a charge, it didn't get hot. It may need to be replaced in the future, but for now, I'm just going to install it. So, we we'll get new battery adhesive. And I almost forgot we need to put back this bracket. All right, now we can slide the battery. All right, we'll connect up the display, connect up the new proximity sensor. Actually, I digress, let's back up a step. I can't forget the display adhesive. That one out of the way, this will be easier to install. There we go. Just gonna rub that on in. Okay, now we can carefully peel off the protectors. All right, back to the screen. Go ahead and connect up the display connector and the proximity sensor. Make sure all the connectors are in solid. And then we'll go ahead and connect up the battery connector. Put back the big bracket. And let's put back all of the screws. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can get it to turn on. And there we got the Apple logo. Now, if we have touch, that means that the IC is on properly. And we have touch. I don't know the passcode yet, but we can test the flashlight. <laughs> that being said, everything looks good. Everything except the battery, of course, looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and close it up as is. And I'll put back the last two screws from this to that. Pretty big difference. All right, so got the passcode. And we're gonna check a few things to make sure everything's working. Looks like the cameras are all working. Looks like the front facing camera is working. When we go into the settings, everything is there. All of the info is there when I go to dial. So I know that we don't have an issue with the sandwich board. My phone is re really cool. There's no warmth coming out of it. All right, so let's plug it in. Now you can see it's charging and it's pulling 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.6 amps. So we're good on charging Let's see if it recognizes wi-fi yep definitely does i'm gonna run through a few more tests but everything is checking out so far at least the ones the major components that i was concerned about yep we are good to go all right there you go we took this and we turned it into this i'm gonna put this little case on it protect the frame for now but we've got a fully functional phone surprisingly and it looks brand new. If there's something that you'd like to see in a future video, leave it in the comments below. If you haven't already, like and subscribe for more future videos like this. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.